So, thank you, actually. Uh, at this time, we, we thought it'd be helpful for everyone to sort of get a background a, a little bit about the program. Um, but at this point, we are going to, I sound a lot louder than you. Uh, we're gonna go right into um, taking a look at some of the program and I'm gonna move this away a little bit. And some of the different areas in which we um, support uh, exactly what Beth was just mentioning. So I'll move this a little closer. Looks like those guys reduced. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Um, so during that entire presentation, many of you, you may have noticed the toolbar that's sitting above the PowerPoint presentation. That is the software. Uh, in a nutshell, Read and Write Gold is a floating toolbar um, that sits in docs itself the top of the toolbar to the left or the right. You really can put it anywhere on the screen you want. You can make it disappear when you're not using it or engaged in it. So it, 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 can, it can integrate directly into whatever curriculum or content areas um, that you like. So what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna start with the reading side of things. We're gonna look at some varying reading environments. And what I like to do um, is look at how we handle inaccessible text, say a locked PDF or flash or an ebook or varying environments that students in encounter every day. So um, before we do that, I do wanna go through just a couple of things with the toolbar and just point out some things. So if you are downloading this on your own, how you might get started with the program. And the first thing you're gonna notice is, as Beth showed in that slide, the toolbar is, is set up in such that the writing, the writing supports tend to be on the left, the reading in the middle, and study skills and research on the right. Um, and also, as you toggle through, if you hover over this toolbar, you'll see you get a little thing that says My Features or Study Skills and All Features. So all of these tools and the way they're represented it can, be, can be varied based on you know, how many tools someone wants available to them. Maybe they don't want such, you know, 20, 20 plus tools. They only want a smaller subset of, of tools. Um, and everything from the reading voice and, and how, when Beth pointed out the idea of reading with, bimodally, that's really the core of what these types of technologies have been able to offer students because students that read or that learn auditorily or visually, um, when they're engaged bimodally in that sense, it really helps in, in, increase their comprehension. Students that have a difficulty decoding words, that spend all that energy trying to read, um, the text, they're just, it just breaks down. So either they don't have the attention or they have something like dyslexia or dysgraphia, ADHD, and this type of program can really help address that in many ways, and we'll get into that. Um, under the play button, and I'm sure all of you understand where, 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 where we would start listening to something here, wherever there's a little drop down, um, there are video tours. So as you go home tonight or sometime this week and you decide you want to investigate this program a little further, I encourage all of you to delve into the video tours. They're two or three minute little Captiva videos that explain the functionality of the program or the tool itself from our prediction tool to our homophone tool. Um, so this is like a little built-in PD for not only for faculty and staff, but for students themselves, because students tend to go to videos to learn how to do things today. Um, we joke about it in, at home. If there's something that I don't know how to do, I tend to go to YouTube to try to figure out how to do it. Um, and so do my kids. Um, so the videos are all, wherever there's a drop down, there's a video. And under the speech tool, I should point out that when I start playing some text, you're gonna see, you can read by word, sentence, or paragraph. So you can have it read by certain reading units, as well as you can have it automatically read next block of text. So depending on the student, you may want them to engage at a younger level. I mean, we are used K to 20. So we're used in elementary school settings where students might, you know, the teacher might want the student to re-engage the, the program or the text so, so they're not just daydreaming. And in, in post-secondary, the, the challenges are a little different. It, tends to be the amount of workload that students have to deal with, how they, how they, um, uh, they do their studying, how they maintain their, you know, their, they approach their work, and how they organize themselves it tends to be a, a big focus. So um, under, under speech options, I did want to just quickly point out that um, there are several voices in the program. We do offer many voices of different languages. I only have about five or six loaded on my machine. But with the program, there's an essential site, sort of like Microsoft has an essential site where you can go 
and pull varying voices, be it Portuguese or, um, or uh, Spanish, Italian, French, what have you. So the, the, the varying languages are there, uh, supports. And you can customize the way the voice reads. And I'll just let you hear the voice. This is your new voice. So this is, is it OK? This voice is actually made by, um, and I'm sorry, my emails are popping up. I don't know how to stop that. So uh, <laughs> hopefully we won't have any my boss yelling at me or anything like that. Uh, so uh, the voices that we include in this program are actually made by a company called Nuance. They make Dragon. Many of you have probably heard of Dragon Dictate or the Siri voice, I think. Even though there was a woman who licensed Siri to Apple, a lot of the technology that are in cars today and in your phones are all developed by Nuance. And the voices that we include in Read and Write are the latest voices that they've created. They have the widest bandwidth. And that tends to be something really in the rules of engagement with text-to-speech. Students want to have a really good voice. Ironically, most young boys are attracted to the Australian voice. And I don't think I have her on here, but there's an Australian Karen, which is, uh, she has a nifty accent. So uh, it really depends on what you're interested in. But certainly, um, there are several voices that, that all speak to varying learners and engagement styles. Um, so. Basically, why don't I just click in? I've got your assistive technology site up because I, I was looking at this this morning prior to coming in. And I'm going to turn on something called Read the Web. And Read the Web is Oklahoma sort of an interesting State feature. University, wherever, Oklahoma City. Well, I think I clicked the link. Wherever I move my mouse, Compliance statement. the program starts to read. Assistive technology in the college setting refers to products. So, devices, or equipment that can assist individuals with disabilities with their educational activities and independence. So the nice thing about how we read the web, and I'm going to pause this for a second. The nice thing about how we read the web is it's, it's, we read right on top of HTML, which is basically a lot of programs, you have to click into the website, select the text, press play. There's several steps to it. And with anything that has a ton of hyperlinks, this can be very frustrating for, for an individual. They, in, and one of the keys is, if many of you have probably worked with students with disabilities in this room, is if they get frustrated, they shut down. They don't want to try it. They don't have the confidence to try it. So, um, you know, we understand that as a company, and we, even though there's a lot to this program, we really recommend scaffolding it out in the sense that you're only going to introduce certain chunks of this at a time because you don't, and there, of course, there's always going to be those learners that just, latch on and, and they're digital natives and they can just handle it. But it tends to be when we're t dealing with teachers and educators that we just say, you know, you really want to chunk this out and introduce certain pieces of this at a time. So as far as how we handle straight HTML, it's relatively straightforward. We hover over it. We can read it. Links, hyperlinks, what have you. It's very straightforward. Now, if I go to Oklahoma the State Oklahoma University, State, Oklahoma um, City. and I'm going to shut off automatically read next block Oklahoma of text. Oklahoma State University, Oklahoma. What I wanted to show you here is on your home, your your website here, there is some things that's, uh, that are based in Flash. And I'm going to go to a, a better site to show you. But Flash is basically inaccessible. It's pictures of text. So students that are using Flash-based programs online or content or even learning modules that companies like Study Island and Pearson and others, well, Pearson not so much. They really create a more accessible type of content and curriculum today. But many of Flash is cool because it's audio and it's visual and people engage in it, but it's inaccessible. If you have students that are using JAWS or are totally blind, they're not going to be able to read Flash because it just doesn't see it. So there is a tool in Read and Write Gold. And let me just see where my settings are. It's called Screenshot Reader. And Screenshot Reader allows me to capture by drawing a, a rectangle around that flash-based image. And it'll read it. It'll also work in uh, pictures. It'll work in JPEGs. It'll work in inaccessible PDFs, really anything, even PowerPoint presentations in slide mode. So at, you know, D2L, if your, your professors upload something in a slide presentation mode for your students, it's totally inaccessible. They've got to pull that down somehow or convert it or print it and scan it, however many stages they have to go through. With this tool, they can actually read it on the fly. So we'll take a quick look and we'll see how this goes because I didn't rehearse it. Um, so I'm going to just draw a little box around this guy right here and we'll see what it, see what it picks up. Maybe nothing. We'll see. About how much will it cost to go to OZU OKC? So it, it read the acronym. 
It tried to read OSU is actually a word. Um, but basically what that's doing is taking a picture of that, that text on the fly. I call it, I'm not in marketing, but I call it like student-directed OCR, which is optical character recognition. It basically scans text on the fly. So um, again, reiterating the importance of this. Yeah, you have a question. Yes, sir. Did you get that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> image or anything, um, any, any uh, thing on screen, is, your, uh, is that patented by, uh, by uh, text help or is that uh, license is, that technology? It is not actually. Um, it's, it's tied in with Abbey. I mean, we license several component pieces into Read and Write Gold, and one of them is the Abbey scanning engine. So we have the ability to scan into PDFs, EPUB, Word from file formats and make them accessible. This particular piece of technology, I think, is tied to the Abbey engine. And how we manipulate that, I don't know, because I'm not an engineer. But um, there's other software on the market that uses the same type of tool, or the, the same type of software or technology, I guess? Yeah, it's not. I mean, we were the I've, first to go out. I'm sorry. Because that's what's like, I've never seen any software that, that will interpret text in a non-text medium. And I'm wondering if, if Read Write is basically the only one that does it, or if there's others. There is another company that's recently come out with it. Um, they're more of a K-12 company. It's called Don Johnston. I don't know if some of you might have heard of them. But they, uh, they have a program that does a similar thing. Um, but we've actually, we were the first to sort of do this about four or five years ago. And it's really been game change and post-secondary for us because uh, I mean, I personally visited Florida State University about three or four years ago, showed this to the disability services people, and they said, this is what we need because students, we've, they got 35,000 students there. Their disability services office supported 2,000 students, and it was really just a matter of access and giving them a tool that allowed their students to engage content on the fly independently was so critical to their objectives there. And I assume it's very similar here. Um, with everything that Brenda's told me about um, the web accessibility committees and other types of uh, committees here on campus that it's really a, a focus for universal access and independent learning environment at OSU. Um, so uh, that is in a nutshell. And Screenshot Reader, you can also, one of the cool things, and I won't, I won't do this, but you can screenshot to MS Word. So you can pull the content if it's in a place that is inaccessible. You can grab it and pull it to MS Word so that you can actually manipulate it. And I'm going to show you how we can create audio files with this program. So imagine a student that otherwise had no access to content, um, content areas that can take this program, grab an image from a PowerPoint or a locked PDF, and then create an audio file with, with this program. So very cool stuff. Um, we'll take a look at that, too. Um, I do want to show you, while I'm doing this, I'm just going to go to, uh, uh, so, and education. Let's see if we get this. I'm going to show you a more, sort of a, a K-12 example, but um, this will at least give us a better idea of how Flash and this tool can interact with each other. So this is actually a flash-based lesson from the Smithsonian Education website. Um, not unlike a lot of e-content that students might engage, the content here might be a little bit more elementary than, than what you typically work. But if I try to select this text or highlight this text or extract anything from it, it's totally inaccessible. So I'll just show you again quickly how we can use this tool um, to grab to grab an OCR that. And it, it, test your knowledge and very test quick. your speed in this Smithsonian quiz. If your first answer is wrong, there are... There's also a replay button there. So after it reads through the whole thing, you can actually press play again. This is what's also been very helpful for map testing, the act and compass placement tests. When you have a scribe or a reader reading a test for you that you have to answer the question, you know, asking them to read it two or three times is sort of embarrassing. Having a tool like this that allows you to do it independently allows you to sit there and fully engage the curriculum or content that you're reading. So it's very important. The other thing that we can do with this tool is capture by hover. So if I turn that on and then I hit the tool, I just move over 
and click into the page once. Um, Myths and monsters test your knowledge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that on mute for a second. The beauty of that is that if you don't have the dexterity to actually draw a box around text, if you have you know physical impairments or otherwise, you just don't have the ability to draw. This this feature allows you to also engage that. So it's very very cool. So that is um, reading inaccessible text and content in Flash. We've looked at how we read HTML. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think what I'd like to do is show you how we engage a PDF environment. I assume PDFs are pretty commonplace here at the university as far as the types of media or that you would receive from a publisher or through disability services or maybe just through your, through your, your, your um, content itself. So I'm going to open up um, a textbook page here. Read and Write Gold has really two component pieces to it. One of them is the toolbar that I showed you. However, we do have a plugin for Adobe. Um, it's called PDF Allowed. And it, this is Adobe Reader here. I think I'm running Reader 10. If I hit Extended, there's a little toolbar inside Adobe. Adobe has some interesting rules of engagement. Um, it doesn't allow us to use certain functionalities that they've built into their tool that they charge for, like their dictionary or highlighter tools. So there are some varying ways that we engage PDFs. Um, but this is an example of a textbook that has some bubble notes and things that have been established in the, t in the text itself. But click and speak is probably how the majority of students would engage Read and Write Gold in our PDF Allowed tool in Adobe. It's also, if this has been pushed out, which I believe has been pushed out to several labs here on campus, and as, and as Brenda made aware in, in, and as Beth alluded to, this program, part of our licensure, allows you to provide it to every student on and off campus. So we understand that the majority of time students are spent studying and reading, learning, is not necessarily in a library anymore. They, everyone has their own technology. People are mobile. Um, they, you know, they have responsibilities outside of the classroom. And the way that we license our program, it includes both platforms on and off campus. So we offer downloads that students can just hit, pull the program to their own computer and use it um, at their own liberty. Excuse me, one sec. That's going to look good in camera. Um, so I'm going to click on Click and Speak. And this basically allows you to navigate anywhere around the PDF and just have it be read to you just by, oh, i got to unmute here. Religious and economic instability, Philip I. I ruled Spain with a strong hand. When faced with crisis, many heads of government take on One of the things we're noticing here is the program powers. is probably going to move through the Philip varying I. rows I. of information. Um, there's an Divide inferred right. reading order One. inside of PDFs. Setting the stage as you learned in so chapter 18. I'm going to mute this again for a second and let it just play out. You saw the way it, basically the program read the main ideas, why it matters now, terms and names. So this is sort of the proper reading order for this particular textbook. and. Um, Adobe has its own inferred, if you ever opened a PDF, it might actually get a message that says, would you like the inferred reading order? Of the, uh, maybe if you're using a text-to-speech program, you would see that. Um, we also have a tool that allows you to change that. So many disability services offices, again, as Beth was talking to some of the challenges, is about media prep. It's about you know making text accessible for students. This is by far getting so much easier than it was even a few years ago. Um, I have a, a book on my computer here, a Pearson ebook. Pearson, every book they make today ha comes in uh, uh, an HTML version of it and a NIMAS version of it. So these are fully accessible, engaged, you know, books that students can read with any type of screen reader, be it Read and Write Gold or JAWS or Zoom Text or whatever the technology is. They can engage directly into those content areas. And this is so critical because three or four years ago, you had publishers didn't want to do it. Think of the way like Apple sort of locks down iTunes and the music industry changed. When the publishing industry changed, it really changed the game for a lot of folks because they were locking down their PDFs. They didn't want people to copy them. You know, they were afraid that people were going to take their beautiful content and you know, run around the hills and do crazy stuff with it. So at the end of the day, um, you know, the, the laws changed in such a way that really made this easier for all of you. 
um, and trying to, to support your students. Um, and uh, Read and Write Gold still has something called a, a scanning engine that allows you to take inaccessible text and scan it so that you can actually create an accessible PDF if you are, in fact, given a locked PDF by a publisher. But if any of you are, all, is anyone an alt media specialist in the room? I didn't see one tied up. So a lot of colleges have people that work solely in prepping content in disability services for students. Um, and my recommendation always is for those types of folks to go back to the publishers that you're working with and demand that you're getting accessible content from them. It just saves a lot of work and time for you. Um, and they're actually, one of the really nice things if, let me just stop this for a second. You know, many of the programs that sort of preceded Read and Write Gold or that were really sort of known for this are proprietary in their file formats. So they actually required you to scan into their file formats. And really, at a 1,000 foot view, the difference with this program is it interacts with all of the native formats that we work with. Word, I won't show you, you know, how we read in a Word document because it's not that exciting. Um, but we do support Word, HTML, PDFs, all of those native environments that students tend to engage in all the time.